Hey everyone, so I worked the clerk booth at Stripe Sessions a couple days this week, and I spent almost the entire time creating demos for to demonstrate, to show people how our product works and how easy it is to get auth added using Clerk. Um, I did this all by creating blank Next.js apps from scratch. In fact, I made uh, over 20 of them over the course of two days. Um, so it was a pretty good demo. I was crazy seeing people's eyes kind of like widen when they see like how easy it is to get working with our platform. Um, so what I showcase specifically is how to get the basic auth package added how to work with B2B orgs or our B2B feature, which is called organizations that gives you a collaborative environment. And then also how to add the new billing features, which lets developers add subscriptions into their, uh, into their projects and generate some revenue off of it. So I figured I'd show the demo here today and I'm gonna do that by, as I said, creating a brand new Next.js application. I'm gonna do this completely unedited. So let's go. Uh, NPX create next app at latest. We'll accept the defaults, and I'm gonna name this demo 02 because I already created demo 01. And while this is cooking, I'm gonna go to our dashboard and I'm gonna create a new application. Now, this is if you create a clerk, if you create a clerk account for the first time, this is the screen you're gonna see. On the right hand side, you can see a preview of what your sign in experience is gonna be for your users. And on the left hand side, you can give your application a name as well as select from a bunch of different sign in options that are available out of the box by default. Uh, we start you off with email and Google. I'm just going to accept those as defaults, but you can add your own OAuth providers in here if you have something that we don't support out of the box. So I'm going to click Create Application, and that's going to bring me to the onboarding uh, section. So there's a bunch of popular frameworks that are available by default, so you can select between them to pick something that works well for you. Uh, Next is our most popular, so that's why we have Next selected by default. But if you don't see something here, we probably support it. Got to check the docs. We also have this new uh, this new thing here where you can copy a prompt and paste it into your favorite vibe coding tool to easily add clerk that way. Um, but to do it manually, all it takes is about four steps. So I'm going to go ahead and power through these. I'm going to copy the first command, which is to install uh, the clerk package. So I'm going to CD to demo too. Thank you for Warp for suggesting that and pasting in clerk slash nextjs npm install at clerk slash nextjs. And once that's installed, I'm going to open this inside of my editor. Uh, I'm going to close this, which we will get to in a moment, and I'm going to zoom in here, and okay. <clears throat> so, step two is to paste in our environment variables. So, the environment variables is what tells, or the API keys, rather, which goes in the environment variables, is what tells your project which configuration of Clerk to connect to so it can pull down things like your uh, selected sign-in options. So, I created my .n file and pasted those in. Then, I'm going to copy and paste in the middleware in Next.js. Middleware runs on every single request. And with Clerk, uh, what we do is we tell the application who signed in. Uh, and this is also where you can protect large sections of your application based on the route. And there's a bunch of other things you can do with Clerk middleware. Um, but all you need to do is paste this in for to get started to detect which users logged in. And then the last step is to wrap the entire application in the Clerk provider. Uh, in Next.js, that is done in the root layout, which is layout.tsx by default. Um, and what the clerk provider does is, by wrapping the entire application, gets you access to use all of clerk's helper functions and drop in UI components uh, throughout your application without having to worry uh, without having to worry about whether or not they're imported inside. Well, I guess that's not true. You still have to import inside the components, but it gives you access to use the helper functions in the components. So signed out is an example of one of our control components. And what this does is basically only render thing, the children of this component based on the authentication state. So if a user is signed out, they're going to get a sign in and sign up button. If a user signed in, they're going to get the user button, which we're going to see in a little bit. Four steps, we're done. We have auth added into our application. So I'm going to type in npm run dev to fire up this application. We're running on localhost 3001. So back inside of my browser, I'm going to open up a new tab and go to localhost 3001. And here is that blank Next.js app. Up right hand corner, I have, I am not signed in. So I have a sign in and sign up button. So I'll go ahead and click sign in and I'm redirected to a hosted sign in. Let me try it again. I'm redirected to a hosted sign-in form. Now, we host these forms by default for you. Just to get you up and running, you have the ability to drop these forms inside your application. We encourage you to do so, especially when you go into production. And um, you can also customize these forms if you want to get deep into the code. So the underlying APIs that power our forms are available to developers. So you can build any kind mm -hmm. of sign-in flow uh, using those helper components to customize your experience for your users if the default form is not something for you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click Continue with Google. And sign in with my Google account. 
And now that I'm signed in, in the upper right-hand corner, you will notice I have that typical floating head avatar thing that is, is common across all SaaS applications. I'm going to go back to the code for just a moment. I want to emphasize that this is the user button, and this is only one line of code. Everything I'm going to show you is powered by this one line of code. So back inside the application, I'm going to click my face and drop this down, and I can see I have an option to sign out in this fly -in menu, this flyout menu, and then I also have an option to manage account. If I click manage account, I'm... I get access to my user profile, so I can customize attributes about my profile. If my application supports multiple single sign-on providers, I can actually link them here. So I would give my users the ability to sign in with either Google or GitHub and then still access the same account data. And then I also can go to the security tab where I can see um, different attributes about the security of the profile, such as setting a custom password. If I had multi-factor authentication turned on, I can customize those options here. I can also see what devices are logged into my account and where they're logged in from. I'm going to have to blur this out because my, my IP address in my town is there. But um, one of the beautiful things with this is if I'm traveling and I'm using this application, my phone gets stolen and I'm signed into the account. I can actually log in and remotely kick that device off my account. So this way I don't have to worry about whoever may end up with my phone accessing the data, accessing my data inside of this application, which is pretty cool. So that is, if you're just getting uh, up and running with a B2C SaaS, that's kind of where you'd stop. But we also have B2B features, as I mentioned. So back in the dashboard, I'm going to select the Organizations tab here and click Configure Organizations and then Enable Organizations. Um, I'm going to go back to the code and I'm going to add in another component here that's going to be my organization switcher. Now, this is, again, emphasizing single line of code. I'm going to paste that in and save it. I'm going to go back to my application. I have to refresh because I just turned orgs on. But now I have this new button up here, and this is the organization switcher. If you've ever worked with platforms like Notion, you know they have the concept of different workspaces you can switch between. Um, this is similar to that. So I can drop this down and I can create an organization. I'm going to name this organization marketing because I'm in the marketing. Marketing, apparently. <laughs> Market, marketing, can't say. I'm in the marketing org at Clerk, so it makes sense that I would create a marketing organization. And then I can start inviting my team members by just pasting in their email addresses here. We handle the, the, uh, we handle the lifting of sending out those emails and creating those invitations on your behalf for these people. And then by default, you have two roles available for each organization. There's the admin role or there's the member role, which gives you different permission sets that you can work with. But those are customizable as well. You can create your own custom um, roles and permissions with our uh, B2B add-on plan, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to create an, an example or an environment where you have, like Notion, just running with that, you have editor, you have viewer, you have commenter. This is, this was, is how you would create those and then build those inside of the clerk dashboard to be available for your users. Um, and with that one line of code, I basically have my org set up and I can start building uh, more collaboration inside of my app. Now, the last thing that I want to show is the new billing, uh, the new billings platform, which we just came out with uh, earlier this week. So this lets you add subscription tiers to your website and start monetizing your web application. So I'm going to go to subscriptions and I'm going to click get started here. I'm going to click on create a plan and Plans can be associated between either organizations or users. So say I want to create a plan and then license everyone within the, or the, the marketing organization specifically. I could do that. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to create a user plan and tie it to my user account. I'll name this plan Pro. I can optionally give it a description. I'm going to give it a monthly base fee of, say, $20. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a feature. We're going to call this feature Widgets. And then go ahead and click save. A feature is like if you've ever seen a, a SaaS product where you have multiple tiers, say like a free, a basic, and a pro, um, there is the kind of the list of different things that each one of those tiers unlocks for you within the application. That would be an example of a feature. So I'm going to create this feature and click save. And then head back to the subscription plans configuration and click enable billing. And now billing is enabled. So in the spirit of single line components, let's go ahead and add the pricing table, which is the new component that we just added into our uh, into our suite of drop-in UIs components. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just open a div tag on the root and add the pricing table component. And again, adding one table or adding one component or one line of code rather uh, gets you a nice pricing table. Here's the widgets that we have. Uh, that's the feature we created. Now, the pricing table can be on a public page or a private page. If it's on a public page, by clicking subscribe, they're going to be prompted to sign in, which will optionally create an account if they don't have one already because uh, it, it, using the sign-in component will uh, sign up or sign in technically. Um, I, I am already signed in, so I'm going to go ahead and click subscribe. I have this nice flyout menu on the right-hand side where, the, where I can enter my credit card information. 
Um, by default, we use Stripe as the backend payment gateway. So if you've ever worked with Stripe, you know that common 4242 uh, card number. You can paste that in or you can enter that in here. Since we're in development mode, I can click pay with test card, which just kind of shortcuts that process. So I don't have to manually type all this in. And then in real time, the application or our components within the application knows that a user is now subscribed. You've noticed the pricing table updated automatically. Um, and I get this nice UI showing that the payment was successful. And then I can also go into my user profile now. And because billing is enabled, I have the billing tab here on the left-hand side. And I can see attributes about the subscription plan that I am subscribed to. I can also switch plans if I have different plans available. We'll handle the process of only charging the difference from upgrading from one plan to the next. Um, I can modify my payment methods here. I can see the previous times that I was paid. And one of the beautiful things about tying the user uh, the user data, which is is inside of Clerk's uh, platform, with what they're subscribed to, is we can unlock some pretty neat features or pretty neat ways, rather, that you can protect things within your application. So has is one of our helper functions. Stop, stop the AI. <laughs> has is one of our helper functions. And by using has, I can pass in the slug of a feature that was created. In this case, I have another demo app called uh, that I'm going to show you in a moment that has a feature called Super Widgets. And then I can selectively return or render um, different UI and different features based on uh, whether or not that user has access to that feature. Like, so again, single line of code, more or less, you can optionally give your users access to different things that they're subscribed to. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's pretty cool. Uh, last thing I wanna show you is a more populated out version of that, that pricing table. So this is, uh, this is a kind of that typical three-tier column where you can see the step-ups of the different features. You can see that all the descriptions are populated here. And then even if I wanted to switch to a plan, I could use the pricing table to do so. So I'll click switch to plan. You could see I'm only being charged the difference of the $20 up to the $50 plan, which is $30. And I click pay. And now I am on the Pro Plus plan. So that is the platform in a nutshell, just a quick and dirty run through. If you have any questions about Clerk as a whole, but especially the billing section because or the billing feature, yeah, billing feature, because this is the thing we just announced this week, I'd love to hear from you. Leave, it, leave your feedback in the comments below. Um, and with that, I will, um, I'll see everybody in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.